to. I think the ideal jail uh, would be a jail that didn't exist. Uh, I think the problem is, you know, when you have a country with an equitable distribution of wealth, pockets of poverty, and so on, the ghettos and uh, unemployment, the systematic disenfranchisement of people, uh, and stereotyped uh, notions about other people, ethnics, and racial groups into uh, standardized patterns of hate, why, uh, uh, then you're going to have uh, large police forces uh, and jails to arrest and hold people in. We have uh, the world's largest jail in Rikers Island, New York. And the uh, very existence of these jails is the uh, symptom of a profound social problem. And it's very simply put, the bigger the jail, the bigger the problem. That's where it's at. time is what it is. They throw the food in your cell like you're in the zoo. So everybody that, that, that ought to be watching, watch them feed the animals. Maybe it's four. 
Who's got it back? I've got the letter. I'll tell you what you do. Hold it. I'll tell you what you do. You call the state parole people here in San Francisco and you tell them the same thing you're telling me. You tell them they got a letter on your fiance and you know it's wrong, okay? Okay. You tell them the same thing you're telling me. You tell them they got a letter on your fiance and you know it's wrong, okay? You won't be able to see him today. There's no visiting today. There's no visiting at this jail today. At this jail today. Tomorrow. 12 to 3. 12 until 3. I'm not going to call you. Okay, I'll tell him that. I'll tell him that. Okay, ma'am. Yes, I'll tell him that. Okay. Well, we don't have to do right away. No, 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 no. Uh, All right. Uh, you know, you know what Eleanor Wyatt? Eleanor Wyatt. Yeah. Well, she'll be up here tomorrow to visit you. Yeah. Hopefully, she'll take you home. She's going to try to get in touch with the state for old people. So will we. See if we get this thing cleared up. Yeah. Time, you can get out for tomorrow anyway. It's not an easy problem, though, see, because it's the weekend and state for all people. Yeah. 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 See, the problem here is is when we have incomplete information, we're bound by that little bit of information. Now, there are a lot of Donald Francis in this world, right? If somebody that uses an alias, uh, well, that, that particular alias can put a man like him in these circumstances. And until we get his thumbprint, physical description, his date of birth, and can convince the state parole people that they actually have a hold on the wrong person, we can't let him go. Because there's always that possibility that they're right. I suppose we can turn them loose and he's charged with two felons. But the burden should really fall on them to give us complete information. Tell them about the food. Take a picture of mattresses on a floor. Let's face it, you're not going to attract, you know, your eggheads to this type of profession. Right? They're not going to be interested in anything like this. No more than I am. I'm not really interested in it. <laughs> How'd you get into it? I uh, lacked education for anything better. There's a simple reason, you know. My father was a captain here. As a matter of fact, the same department died while he was on duty here. You see, I just more or less followed in his footsteps. You know. I was too short for the police at the time. It was 5'9", I'm 5'8". The sheriff's department accepted people at 5'8". Otherwise, I probably would have gone in the police department. When they lowered the height to 5'8", in the police department, I was pretty well situated here. I was a lieutenant, so I passed on that, you know. Otherwise, you're just as confined in here as the prisoners. It's not a very, you know, pleasant place to be. <coughs> First day I'm eligible is the day I'm going to be gone out of here. How long is that? Oh, great. Now, I'm 36 be 14 years, 14 more years. But I'm going the first day I'm eligible. You grew up in San Francisco? Yeah, right, yeah. yeah. In the Mission District. Lived all my life down here. Now I moved down to the suburbs now, you know, moved to Belmont. Well, has anything changed in your head? I mean, the 
the nature of people that you're working with? Uh, well, I, I guess not people in general, but people in here. When I first came in, I believed most anything they told me. Now I don't believe anything anyone tells me in here, you know. I take it all with a grain of salt, everything I hear in here. I weigh it against what I know and other circumstances that might tend to show that that's truthful or something else might not be. Do you have any serious troubles since you've been here? No serious trouble. People have been hurt seriously, stabbed, uh, you know, injured pretty bad in fights and so forth, yeah. There's never been anybody killed since I've been here. The riots they've had have all been uh, food riots. Actually, I think it's been pretty quiet, the whole thing as a whole, but for the number of inmates from a, a metropolitan area like San Francisco, the type of individual you get in here, things have been pretty calm around here, you know. A lot of noise once in a while, a lot of fires and stuff, but no real violence. Did they send up that other fish? They were supposed to send up six more, Jim. They didn't give it to me, man. I took that other stuff back down there. Hey, Sullivan! Sullivan! Hey, Sullivan! Call him again. What do you tell me? Just talk to me. Nobody gave me anything. Well, I'm wind up my day here now. We get my hospital. What's your name? Kelly. Kelly? What's your name? All right. So France and uh, what's your name on the top bunk? Yeah. Harry. Harry. Right. Okay, Harry. I got a trace for you, y'all. I got a trace for Harry. I got a trace for y'all. Get this stuff off, huh? Tonight. Oh, you're damn right. I'm going to throw you in that isolation. You don't get that off. Christ, look at it. Yeah. It's beautiful art, but it doesn't co coincide with the rules. I know it'll be a five-day lock. No, he will. <laughs> no way. You have five days for the peace of mind. I have to pick that up. All right. Is that your stuff? Is that your rule? Yeah, that's my stuff. It is to pass the time. Uh, has a message. Danny Drug. I'll erase it. I'll wash it off. Yeah, I'm chicken. You want my count? You want my count? One short? Yeah. We have so many men out of their cells. Then we count the people that are out. It has to match up. We have to account for everybody, you know. So. We take a total of the number of people that are out of their cells, and then we count the cells that are empty that people should be in them, and it's supposed to add up. <laughs> We're afraid of officers, and officers are equally afraid of inmates. Not from a physical point of view, but I think from an emotional point of view. Uh, if our views were more strongly felt or, or thought about, then officers become afraid because their position has become threatened. I was involved in an incident where they uh, took me downstairs in the basement where I was secluded and away from everybody else. And, uh, you know, uh, they wanted some information. Who did it? The establishment. I can't say no names. But at any rate, uh, they gave me, I got the impression that I was, they were going to either do bodily harm to me or I was threatened that they were going to take my work time. I was threatened they were going to take my good time. They were, told me they were going to throw me in a hole. They told me they were going to put a snitch jacket on me, you know? Uh, that the deputies were going to put a snitch jacket on me. I don't know what you want to call it. You can call it underdog and you can call it whatever you want to call it, but it's, it's really, you know, it's too much, you know? Somebody got to do something about it.
Who's Flint? It's yours. Who's Flint? Give me money. That's what I'm busting for, money. Don't stop now. Give me a damn. Keep running. Don't stop now. 15. 15, dude. 15. 15. Get on out of there. Bring it on down. Get on out of this camp. Is that right? That's all. Quick. We're going to move the cameras on down when you start. Yeah. Who's Flint? Let's go back down. It ain't nobody's Flint. But my partner. One dime. We need a doctor, they need a dime. Yeah. We're making a movie. Yeah, we're making a movie. What's the name of it? Uh, Santa Spade's Day in Jail. Oh, but I'm coming out, honey. <laughs> All you bitches in the West Indies, I'm on my way out. Give us a quarter and get the fuck out of here. No, you look quiero es que me suelten a la chingada. No, en el Mexican border allá que me aviente. Mexican border. I mean, all you see in this jail is uh, Mexicans, brothers, and long-haired hippies. And winos. And winos, that's it. And middle of the third people. That's all you see in here. They don't have too much nothing else in here. There's no kind of organization they are. The man that runs it is a racist pig. Um, he, uh, he fires all the, excuse me, Oh, uh, hey, Joe Blake. He is an artist, Blake. He just, don't get an artist. The system is racist. They are, they're, they're very prejudiced around here. The man is too old downstairs, and he fires all the young, uh, fires all the young deputies that got an understanding with us, because as soon as he sees they got an understanding, he don't like that. He's trying to fuck us all. No, ain't your play, man. If we wanted to, we could fuck all over these pigs. Get on over there. What you want to know about jail, man? They got winos and junkies, you know, and they got nuts in here, you know? But they still, they stick them in here with us, you know? And at night, they be talking and they sleep and stuff, you know? Some people never been exposed to this until they came here, you know what I mean? <laughs> And you see what they put a man on when they get him. <laughs> they, they take his other shoes and put him on these him. That's cold, eh? <laughs> but one day it's going to get better. Para la gente que habla español, dile a la gente que habla español que aquí vale madre. You ain't got the visit yeah, through a screen and things. You got the visit through a screen that you can't see a woman. Your woman's about 15, five feet from your little hole this big. Holler. And you're only 15 minutes, 25 people talking at one time. 25 people talking at one time. You're hearing everybody's conversation. You got to keep repeating yourself in order for her to hear what you got to say. And then they come and tell you you got to go. talking at one time. You want to look at your lady, you have to wait till you're getting ready to walk out and stand in front of the, in front of the glass, you know, to look at your lady. And that's, you know, that shit down downtown, they got telephones and shit, you know, where you sit and look at your lady. But up here, they don't have nothing, man. This is the boys jail in California, man. Woo! I'm watching you, man. man watching me what? Get back so you can see uh, what you're doing there. You play dominoes or you watch TV or whatever, you know, it's, it's not too much to be done except for thinking a lot. You know, get your mind together, you know, and, uh, you know, go over the things that you uh, so-called feel as were, well, you know, mistakes and things like that. You know. But uh, that's about it. As far as the night is concerned, the day uh, no, is a different story. It's my favorite word. They're all in and lock them up. All in and lock them up. You know, the day yeah, is, man, come the on is a different thing. Now. You know? Good, good. Uh, Still no folks out. My God. 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 No God. All in and lock them up. Rick. Rick.
all Bay Area Jimco stores. Hoover's spin drying washer is available for the low, low price of $129.88. Needs no plumbing. Do you think of yourself as a man or a woman? Well, I think more like a woman than a man. Do you think that's why you're put in jail? I think that's why. Could you explain that? I can't explain nothing. Where are you from? From Samoa. How many hours? It's just like a king. What do you mean? Being a prostitute. Being a whore. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean by that? It's fine. What kind of things do you do? In what? In your gang. Do you pick up people on the street? No, they pick me up. Well, sometimes, you know. Well, how'd you get busted this time? Well, I was talking to a police officer. <laughs> Wish I didn't prep station him. What happened? He asked me if I want to go out with him. Well, what was this say? I said, okay. He takes me to a nightclub. And he flashed his badge. He said he was a police officer. Well, there's nothing wrong going out with someone, is there? It's nothing, going to, it's nothing wrong with that. She's going out. So what are you arresting for? 647B, 647A, I don't know what that means. And a female impersonator. It wouldn't work out. That's the way it is. Is there somebody else? No. But there was. And you wanted to marry her. I did marry her. And the next thing you knew, she'd run off with some other guy. You know you won't even let yourself be human. A girl walked out on you and you couldn't take it. But you take it out on me. Now you think every girl's a classic. <laughs> I have trouble, you know, eating. I have trouble adjusting to this place. I like television a lot at home. But here, I mean, I can't get ready for it because there's no place to sit that for it. I mean, you're sitting on it a few minutes. You can't get comfortable, you know? Even if you bring your blanket out, it's still uncomfortable. So that blows television. And I like to read a lot at home, but I can't get ready for reading here. I mean, how's everybody on the street? Have you seen my daddy? Yeah. I saw him yesterday. Yesterday. So what did he say? Did I was in jail? Did he tell you? Yeah, and he gave me the name you were. Did you receive the letter? I don't know, but. You know how he is. Hey, what? <laughs> About what? About getting married, huh? Married? I'm already married, man. Can you see? Can you see oh, well, yeah, well. some kind of plain food or something? Yeah. Say, Jack. Jack. <laughs> See what? This is what this kind of institution produces, though. These kind of relationships, and uh, they're perfectly legal. You know, well, they ought to be. They ought to be made legal in the state of California. They have been made legal in the state of Illinois. 
And I don't think people ought to be punished for what the institution produces. People have been, they've been put in the hole with what society calls isolation, or whatever their relationships have been forced to be in these kinds of joints. And uh, as a result of my being incarcerated, uh, I've become homosexually inclined, and this is the reason why I'm up here. And whenever I go to jail, I'll always be on homosexual tears because we're so segregated. We aren't allowed to be in any other part of the jail because they say we're dangerous. We demoralize the other inmates. We create fights and whatever, which is not true. Matter of fact, at one time, it used to be the way it was out there in the yard. What's that like since I haven't on the yard yet? Well, yeah. They don't let us go out. The only place I've been is to the chapel, to the classrooms, to the hospital, to the treatment room, to the uh, bathroom where you take your baths, and to the dentist, and to the front, ga front gate. You know, from the dentist, when you come in, that's the only place. But to go in the other tiers, they don't ever let us go. You know, they get a heart attack. Uh, problem children, as we call them, for our queens. Uh, you might have, at any given time, you might have in a tier that might consist of 80 men, you might have 20 to 25 homosexuals. However, the remainder of the tier has to be utilized because we have to use every inch of space possible with a count as high as we have. So what we do with these queens is put in the remainder of the tier the senile, possibly, the, the cripples, uh, the elderly. Uh, instead of putting the young bucks in, you've got the older men up there who can't work. Uh, having them isolated the way we do doesn't necessarily mean that when we go out into the recreation yard that they are isolated in one group out there. They can mingle, but we have our guards out there at the same time. See the future has, has the criminal element changed at all since you've been on the job? Or it it's gotten worse. It's gotten worse. There's a, there's a, the warden of San Quentin stated it quite well when he went on and said that um, this this uh, radical element has gotten to the criminal element, convinced them to a degree that what they are in a prison for and what they're serving time for is really not their fault. It was the social conditions. Whereas before, a few, some years ago, a person went to jail, he knew it inside of him, what he had done, he, the crime he had committed, and why he was in. He tried to beat the, the rap in court, to try not to get caught, but then he, once he was caught and got stuck with the sentence, he served it. But we don't have that now. There's a larger element that leans on the radical side that feels righteous indignation to serve time for a crime that they've committed, or a series of them. And it probably it'll get worse. Why do you think there have been so many radicals uh, in the last few years? <laughs> I have to go along with um, what the director of the FBI has stated all his life. And uh, we get his publications, and he has stated time and time again, it's the communist background that uh, we have to contend with, the ramifications, the, um, what you would call the pinks, the followers, what else? Freedom, we have freedom. They talk about turning down the establishment. All right, here's the establishment. We're pleading for people to study, go to school, learn something, come on in, join the establishment. And uh, if they don't want to, well, that's, uh, that's their baby. Then they have to suffer by it. All right, let's go! Say, Tony, you yeah, 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 yeah,
Perpetually day to day to day, zombies in a house of madness. Eyes, thousands of anguish eyes and empty looking faces, faces of no hope, eyes looking at eyes, blurred with red with misery, disgusting misery, zombies in a house of madness. Bodies, slump bodies, carrying tons of sadness, tons of nothingness, mechanical moving bodies, moving to nowhere, yet constantly moving, zombies in a house of madness. Yet deprived of thinking, minds and heads, heads on dead bodies, bodies dead because they can only move when instructed, yet when instructed they only move as zombies in a house of man. <laughs> Them up, zombie watchdogs shout the zombies all out to the yard, all in from the yard, all eat, all piss, all shit, all sleep, all shut up, all get your damn ass beat. Zombies in the house of man. Zombies are we, you know we not zombie with that zombie clicks, clicks that ain't clicks, that clicks. We say clicks that click together when the zombie white dog say move or else. All ages of all kinds are we, and mostly black zombies in the house of madness. Damn, here comes to me that cloud of sickness filled with thousands of distorted abstract bodies, shattered souls, eyes of misery, chained naked faces, faces with heads, with minds, yet minds struggling and dying, contemplating justice, zombies in the house of madness. And yet society calls them correctional institutions. For what? Oh yeah, society's unadjustable. <laughs> Here in the county jail. 
<laughs> hey, man, I'm not going to go through no self-abuse trip for a year. <laughs> have no fear. I don't want you clean. All right? Well, man, I ain't worried about nobody taking it. When I, when I get out of here, I might call up your old lady, which is clean you can have. That's okay, man. All right. You know, that's, that's really cool. All right. First place, you wouldn't have got that way if you hadn't read your lady, your wife's name in my letter. <laughs> I was ribbing him one night telling him, I said, hey, man, you know, how liberal-minded is your old lady? She looks pretty good. Next visiting day, he tells his old lady, he said, hey, Walter likes you. And uh, when he gets out, we're going to do a trip. You know, oh, the four of us. Walter's old lady. Definitely told uh, Bunyan and I. All these dudes want my old lady. And all. I don't want your old lady. Oh, oh, hey, I tell, I tell oh, you know what I tell my man? I said, look, man, this cat wants you. 55-3. No, I'm not hip to that part of the game. What? That oral copulation bit. I have oral copulation with my wife. And he, he has oral copulation with a queen. He's got oh, it. Oh, 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 no. Oh, 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 no. You know, you were just rapping with us, man, one night, you know, right. we were just talking about how you thrilled and pleased your old lady so much that through an accident, that's what it was. Yeah. That's what yeah. the word it used, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, accident. Yeah. Through, through the high stimulation of her nerves, she lost all control over her sphincter muscle, which is the, uh, oh, which is the uh, voluntary muscle, which can, uh, controls uh, uh, the, the control of her urine, yeah. and, and she, she let go. Right? <laughs> <laughs> now you go around and everybody calls you pussy boy. Right. And now he's the pussy boy. <laughs> oh, yeah. Come to the French lab, man. man. He's got his own queen in there. I don't have a queen, and I don't want one. Man, you got a wife. It wouldn't look good. I mean, you know, you're too short. I'm doing a year. Both times. I mean, so you'd hate for me to be all down to. If, if you have a long way. time to do in jail, get yourself a queen. After a while, yeah. you would look good. Where's yours? You have a long you time. You would look good after a while. Too. Where's your queen? Reggie's queen. I'm looking at you. Oh, that's, that's right, and that's why he's in here. He got busted behind a queen on the street. Yeah, we're going to bring it all out. Now, let's get All right, let's bring it all out. Yeah. Reggie. I remember oh, man. Hey, Mike, and tell us about yours, man. Well, uh, <laughs> there are nuances to to that that I you know I never never understand. But uh, when you talk about something as as just as earthy, fundamental as sex, it's you know the expressions aren't going to change. They really don't change that much. But uh, in that area, you see, there there are a lot of taboos like. Um, you saw a few guys up on the clean tier, you know, who you would not take to be homosexual, who were, who were confessed homosexual. This one guy that said, you know, that prison life has led him into this kind of thing. Well, he knows when he, when he takes that position, he gives up the kind of, the kind of uh, social status that the rest of the guys have, the rest of the heterosexuals have. He knows that. That's the penalty he pays. But it's all dealt with, you know, very... There, there, there are no shades of gray. You know, it's pretty black and white all the way down the line. Sex is handled on, on that basis. And uh, the way it's discussed is the best indication of, of the way people deal with it. You know, they'll never need, they'll never need psychiatrists to tell them what they are. They'll never have any, there'll never be any sexual confusion. Everybody knows where he is. And they deal with it very, in a very uh, fundamental way. I have to go out. I got a call. I'll okay. be back in them. This is my first time here. So. Did you get sex? Uh, shoplifting. 80 days. How come you get to work on the farm? Well, they ask you if you want to work, and then you say, yeah. You say, farm or stair janitor. Whatever. Is it a privilege to work out on the farm? Privilege? What do you mean? But to work out here instead of inside the... Yeah, I think it is, you know, instead of sitting in your cell all the time. It's better. It makes time pass faster. So, I'd rather work out here than sit in there. <laughs> How's the food here that you grow? Oh, lousy. Is that, is that all right? Am I supposed to say that? <laughs>
know? When he's quiet, you're like, what do you think? <laughs> yeah, I can dig. Hey, uh, I'm telling you, I would rather be in the Army or in the state penitentiary than to come to this place. That's the truth. Like, it's just monotony over there. Twice a week, hot dogs, uh, beef, uh, stew, and then spaghetti. It's just over and over and over. Like, it ain't so bad for me, because I, I only got to do 60 days. What about a guy that has to do nine months, a year, or more? You know, the guy's going to be run down and be nothing when he gets out of here. It's just bad, you know? I say when you're dealing with a big system like this, the food condition is another is another another form of agitation because the minds are not adjusted to accept this show, especially when they first come in. You know, whatever. You're dealing with uh, you're dealing more with a group of people that's readjusted themselves to a different society. This is a city within another city, and to get. Uh, completely used to something like this, uh, it's very hard. Because most people that come in here, they venture off into a different form of insecurity. You know, it's a hell of a trip. Well, you're going to get complaints because uh, they're in a place where they don't like. And it ain't like you'll get at home. It's impossible to try to cook for 700, close to 800 people. And, suit everybody's taste, you can't do it. Each individual has a different taste. You gotta form a medium, that's all you can do. Drunk. They said I was drunk. They never proved it. They didn't have a complainant in court. They never proved it chemically. Like they do a drunken driver. I just wind up in jail because they said I was drunk. What are you doing up on this upper berth? I had no choice. Nobody has a choice on those things except uh, the people who assigned you. Yeah, otherwise, they'd get rid of these goddamn things. This, this, this is a place for a hen or somebody can fly. How do you feel in here? How do I feel? I can't express that in words. A former United States president said, this democracy will last for 1,000 years. And Harry Truman was a man who said that. And I believe it because what I see and what we all see in the San Francisco Bay Area is something that you will not see in actually the weak part of the United States, the weak country, the heart, actually the heart of America. We see the rough side of it. Back there, that is really still America. So I am not afraid at all of uh, uh, the scene as it has changed out here. Uh, you've, got to, you've got to realize a man, for example, that is brought from a farm away in the deep south and is brought to San Francisco or the Bay Area, he's introduced to something he has never seen in his life it's, it's a very, very, very big surprise. It's a revelation to him. But by the same token, we don't seem to realize so many people that are constantly bitching about the fact that America is going to hell don't seem to realize that there in your Midwest, in your Northwest, uh, in different sections of the country, you still have what Harry Truman said, a democracy that's going to live for 1,000 years. And with 35 and a half years wearing a badge, believe me, I still believe that. The map right here, this represents stuff. I'm going places. And you see that sign? This here is my name. And this is what they call me on the street. The enforcer. Yeah. You see, I used to wear 160, but unfortunately, I wear 130 now because the food here, I don't like it. See, we have to make our own groceries in here. That's got to last me 29 days. I won't get nothing else. Yeah. All the men around here. You know? Yeah. See, I got shows the other day with some punk. Yeah. Here, this is my shit here. I keep it covered up. You know, I don't like nothing in it. You know? Take it off. Take this. Oh, yeah. It's clean. See, this is a scrabble board game, but I, I broke it up because I don't want nobody to use it. See, I got two shirts, you understand? I ain't supposed to have it, but I got it anyway. Two towels, I ain't supposed to have that, but I got that anyway. Vote for me for sheriff next year. I'll see that you have, if, if it's not a real libel, I'll trust it to you.
That should be a hole in every cell. And two for the head trustee. Don't forget to put it on TV that, that this cat here is a psychopathic lame. Legitimate complaint, man. Yo, you know that well, hell, that's what's a legitimate complaint. You worry about your stomach. I'm worried about my sex life. Legitimate complaint. Yeah, fool here is a fried food, man. Food, man. Damn the fool. No. No. I can live with you. Wait a minute, man. Don't let old fools try to slip that in the right case. The righteous, the righteous, the righteous uh, uh, complaint, man. Yeah, yeah, Improper yeah, medication. Yeah. I mean, not. Uh, not nearly about enough of medication. The food, the, I mean, the food is garbage, you dig? And everything, everything about this judicial system here is wacky. You stepped out of bounds, you're a criminal, you went to the can. It was a heavy crime, you went to prison. We didn't have trouble in, the, in your uh, big institutions, even right on down to the local. Then we got humane, parole system, creation system which is fine, and at the same time, we got trouble. When you put all these factors in, and you try to make a jail and a prison do all of these things, a rehabilitative institution, an educational institution, a punishment, and a retraining, you can't, it can't be done. They have, they have to pick out one direction to go in. You have it in the, in the past, you have it, um, well, what do they say, there's the three kinds of people, the three, entities that respond to the carrot and the stick. Criminal women and children. Give them a lot of attention and be extremely severe with them and you'll get good results. But this is just a personal belief based on a lot of research. More and more right out here at the university, one of the professors teaching uh, penology, he himself has rejected uh, the rehabilitative factor, saying it can't be done, it doesn't work. Oh, that'd be fine. 50 miles from nowhere in the middle of Mojave. And whatever sentence you got, cut it in half. Out to, out to the desert, make a great big place there. One set of clothes they have to take care of, and lots of work. Minimum of food, enough to keep body and soul together. If, you, if every day you're sick, you have to do an extra week. And um, the idea won't, won't be accepted, won't be done but it would work. And we have the proof of that. I think I mentioned before about everyone that's been in a concentration camp in a war has never been in two concentration camps in two different wars. They never go back the second time. <laughs> Extreme. 
But I think the majority of the younger guys in the department will the guys that are out going to parties or they're doing a lot of running around will generally take their, their guns with them if they're going to be someplace where they, you know, like downtown or where they may come into some situation where they may have to depend on it. Like, I live down here on the peninsula and I would rather go to San Francisco without my shoes than I would without my gun. She talk around her big mouth. This thing, I was only telling him the truth. She said you she was doing that last night. What? <laughs> she got to bring all was that, that you? in here? No, that wasn't me. That wasn't in here. Yes, you were. You were lying. You, you shared the same couch. Yeah, well, whatever. <laughs> so what are you in here for, dear? Time. Oh. And then cashing eight thousand dollars. Really here for nothing. Cashing eight thousand dollars worth of welfare here. check. That's why you're here. <laughs> no. Don't try to get innocent. I'm not here on no welfare. Yes, you. Oh, 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 oh yeah. Oh yeah. Really? Really? No. Listen, what are you My doing? My husband left me, and I had no place else to go. So I'm here. Bye. <laughs> 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 Your husband is out there for real, or not? You like Junior sits out at the gate, Miss Thing. That's why I ran back here to get you. Now, I need to tell you. as I was telling you, Marge, before I was interrupted by Junior. <laughs> oh, girl, I had such a boring day today. Sure you did. What are you going to do tonight? Are we going to play Scrabble? I think I did last night. Save a little more time. Yeah, well, that's all you can do. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Whose house are we in? Um, what's the shirt? It's very nasty. Look at it. Oh, it's magazines all over, old naked pictures. Well, that's because all these people see you. Look at the walls. <laughs> oh, that's your house. Come in your house and let the people see what you look like. <laughs> Come in your house. Look at this man. He's scared to take the hook out of the fish. And he's been fishing, I don't know how many years. He brings the, a little, where are you going? You're afraid of the law? He just take it out, take it out. I go, what? Just take it out. So first time I took it off, I wasn't even paying attention, you know. 
Then he called Bullhead, and he goes, take it out, take it out. <laughs> and I go, oh, dude, what's the matter with you? I said, can't you take him out? And he goes, no, you better wait to touch him or anything. I don't mind it all, man. I don't I like to touch the fish. With it. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to touch the fish. That kid can, he can catch uh, quite far. Mm. Well, I'm surprised he caught a fish. Last time we went fishing, we went bass fishing. We went out, and he took me to this place, man, this godforsaken place. And I told him, well, I'm not going to take a chance, man, if it's posted, you know. So I said, give me one of your rods and reels, man. You're so confident. He gives me this goddamn thing, and I go out there, and I go, thing. Everything comes flying off, man, the reel and everything. I'm, I'm having parts, man. I don't know. Yeah, it's, 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 what are you guys doing? Yeah. How about relieving the guys upstairs? I haven't eaten nothing. Okay. King? King? All right. Murphy? Bowden? How much? How much? 20 for the How should you relieve uh, King? King has an eaten. You want me to relieve? Well, what about the kid out here? Can he eat him? The one out here in the uh, hallway? You want me to relieve him? Palmer's going to relieve him now. Okay. So he can eat. Is he ready? Yeah. Oh. Oh. Well, like we had this one, Bridget and stuff, and, you know, they're trying to castrate her, so. Uh, with a spoon, she goes through these delusions. I don't know, sometimes she comes in on uh, 647F, which is drunk, and she'll stay in there for two or three days, depending on how she uh, she feels, I guess, you know. Uh, we have guys that come in here, they'll save all their uh, excrement and stuff and try to dump it on the deputies or the other inmates. They'll sit there, they'll masturbate through the bars, you know. It all, after you get to know them, you can see into them and see, you know, well, you know, what's making the guy do this and stuff? And it's, then it gets interesting if you look at it from that point. But at the beginning, no. That is a cup call. That's usually if somebody's sick or something like that. They'll put in a cup call. And everybody's supposed to answer it. Let me, let me get my wagons. I got to get my wagons out here. Okay. Just county jail right now are in for a violation of probation. probation. Right. You know, whether or not you're guilty or not. Probation, your probation is supposed to state if you believe if you're convicted of a crime. Right. From what I understand, that's the only way you're supposed to be violated because from what I understand, you're guilty until you prove, I mean, you're innocent until you've proven guilty, which they have the, have it in reverse here. You're guilty until you've proven innocent. When the case is dropped, you haven't committed no crime, but you still violate. And that's unfair. Yeah, like I, I beat my case, but I still have 90 days for violation of probation. You may not be the tallest man in the world. You run into a lot of your buddies up here, you know? Yeah, you do. A lot of guys I went to school with. I went to school with him, you know? But the inmates also, you know, you run into a lot of them that you've hung around with when you were younger and stuff. I think that's the hardest part about working here. Yeah. Because I go back and you tell all your here. friends. <laughs> right, you come in here and you meet guys you grew up with, guys you went to school with, guys you had fights with, guys that hate you. You know, some guys that used to love you, but now they hate you. <laughs> so, that's about the hardest part. I think the, no, I think the hardest part is just being insensitive, really. You have to become insensitive to a point, you know. If you don't, you know, you'll get hurt sometimes. Well, you break um, your neck for all these guys every time you hear a story, you know. And that's no good, you know, you can't be that sensitive. Because, you know, like I think I told you before, one out of ten guys really got a good beat, and the rest is just BS, shucking and jiving with him. And if you listen and get wrapped up with every story, every line, you know, your nerves are just going to go. You, know, you have a lot of guys that get too emotionally involved, 
and your nerves go. Uh, it's, when you're introduced into a jail, somebody says, this is a key, this key opens this set of doors, and when you close the door, you just close it. Is that light too bright? Is that light too bright? Yeah. You be in the dark before they light is bright, you know? How long have you been in the hole? How about three or four days. What are you in for? Why were you put in the hole? Uh, the deputy thought he heard something come out of my room and he thought it was me, so he put me in the hole. What did he think he heard? He thought he heard, fuck you. And you didn't say it? No. What are you doing there? Ain't nothing you can do but lay down. Have you got any blankets? What? You got a mattress? No. What kind of toilet do you have? Toilet's in the middle of the floor. You don't even have toilet paper. How do you get rid of the waste? In the middle of the floor. Do you flush it yourself? No. What else have you got? That's all you got. You don't even have no socks or shoes in here. Is it cold? Yeah, it's cold in here. Down right in with him, you know? Yeah. That'll be pretty swift. No, that'll be better than riding a bus, I guess. Yeah. Better get the sheriff's van. the only way you get into town. Well, see, now they don't take you down the Hall of Justice. They take you up to the Glide Memorial, give you food stamps and uh, breakfast. Well, I come out to visit my son. He's been out here for, he'll be here for approximately six months. If there's supposed to be a communications gap between people, it's pretty well between the screens because you can't hear anything because of the commotion. Whenever you ask for it. But if you ask for it all at one time, you spend it all in one day, you just, you just in a world of trouble because I can't come down here. This is too nervous, really. This, this is a bad place. I know, I know what you mean. Look through the window. This is a bad place, but I'm not going to be coming. You can call Jackie and tell Jackie. Jackie, Jackie ain't coming down here. Jackie no, I know that. I'm not telling you to bring her down here. Just call Jackie. I ain't Jackie telling her nothing. You don't get to touch them or nothing. God, all you, see, you can't even hear behind these little screens. Everybody's talking at the same time. So, I'd rather, you yeah, know. Yeah, they should have better conditions for the visitors. That's what they should. At least take the windows down or something, you know. At least put bars up and let them touch or something, you know. Like soul to soul, sister soul, right on, right on. You move my soul, you move my soul. Oh, how you move my soul. Forced into slavery, shackled and chained in strange land. Forced into pregnancy, child born to slave master property. Working the fields, working the house, working to death, dying a dog. Treated with hate, molested from lust from that cracker slave master. Yet you still stand strong to carry your black race on. Ah, oh, sister, soul for soul, sister, soul right on, right on. Stripped of your native tongue, your culture, stripped of your womanhood, your humanity, stripped of your life, stripped naked, yet you struggle strong in carrying this burden. When I, your black brother, feel defeated and lost, when white as world destroys my struggling fight for freedom, when I, your black brother, feel that I can't go on, when white as world make death appear welcome, I look at you, my black sister, and find the strength to carry on. Soul for soul, sister, soul right on, right on. You know, the interesting thing about that guy is, uh, I, I remember something that Baldwin wrote, a question he asked about, you know, what happens to all that beauty? And, you know, if, if you want to talk about real tragedies, I suppose you see more in a guy like this than, than anybody, because here, here's a guy who's boxed in, that, that uh, society can make no better use of him than to let him be just, just what he is, you know, uh, a jailhouse boy. It's unlikely he's going to get the kind of reception in, in larger society that, he's, that he finds in the jail. And uh, so the, the, all the avenues for recidivism are set up for him. He, he can very easily become institutionalized because it, it offers a, a lot of answers. And I have very strong doubts if I could have succeed in the way he's succeeding. And I think, I think that uh, this is a common thing among all minority groups. It's the reason that it's so easy to, to identify with these guys. Uh, and I, I think one of the reasons that, uh, that I can function well in the jail system is that 
you don't have to say who you are, what your experiences have been. People intuit that in many areas you understand them and they understand you. Like, uh, it's about my hometown. It's, it's the main street called Bill Street, man. And uh, when concerning the brothers, man, it's a Bill Street everywhere, all across America, man. And like, uh, it goes like this. Uh, Walking slowly down Bill Street, slick niggas drag, horse stroll, damn. Six years I've been away, things sure have changed, maybe because it's my generation now on Bill Street. Strange yet familiar, the old faces of my old friends. Bill Street, Bill Street, home of the blues, my home. Like an oversized bathroom, sucking in the new victims, my generation, to replace the old, the old that you sucked in and chewed a lie. Oh, there's my best friend, I was, Little Jones, nodding with his chin in his chest, slowly sliding down the walls of the Blue Stallion Club, while B.B. King voice flows from the jukebox through the building, moaning the thrill is gone. Little Jones on heroin, nodding on the lyrics. I hear Freddie, my old classmate now called Fast Freddie, how on coke rapping with one of his six whores, pimp talk they call it. They say Freddie's doing swell. El Dorado, six whores, big boss pad, looking deep in Freddie's eyes. I can see the agony and anguish of Bill Street. Yeah, Freddie's doing good, huh? Bill Street, Bill Street, home to blues, my home. Nightclub, whole houses, dope pads, freaks, theaters. Building, buildings huddled together like a bunch of ragged, funky, drunk, swaying. Big, pretty cars going nowhere. I seen out of place on Bill Street. Like Jive as Nixon did, funky button to the soul of James Brown. There's Shirley once an honor, honor student, now pregnant with number three. The father's unknown. She's on welfare. Free fuck for anyone when drunk on Red Devil. She's stumbling now. And there's Johnny wants my tight. They say he's gone mad. I hear him shouting, God will save us with God chosen children. Who God, I wonder. People pass him like a street sign, a bus stop, Bill Street, Bill Street, home the blues, my home. The crowd moving like roaches scouting for night crumbs, in and out of buildings seeking thrill, cheap sex thrill, thrills that last only from weekend to weekend, maybe not that long. There's Snail from the chain gang named Snail cause he walks so slow. Face cut up from the regular night, Friday night, Bill Street fight, fights to start and shit, shit that ain't shit, yet enough shit to start fight. Cause fights supposed to be on Friday night, at least that's what that cracker says. Bill Street, Bill Street, home the blues, my home. You can smell the funk of the horse, thick funk and funk, funk that draws trick, cracker tricks to Bill Street. Every weekend, many come through the week. Fighting, fucking, cutting and shooting, stealing, robbing drunks and junkies. Bill Street, Bill Street, home the blues, my home. Pigs riding forth deep in their pig buggies. Four pigs with one Bill Street nigga head. Bill Street, Bill Street, home the blues, my home. Damn, need I say more or what, brother? One day I'll make it. When? I don't know. Whenever they decide, to let me go. It's a chain to be locked up, you know. I've been down on my back ever since 71, January 10th. From a car accident to the hospital, from the hospital to the jail. Things haven't got no better, but it ain't gonna get no worse. You know, I'm grateful I'm alive, to tell you the truth. You know? Oh, well, I dream about a lot of things. <laughs> Quite naturally, my main dream is about home, you know. Well, my dreams is kind of, you know, those kind of dreams, and, uh, <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, uh, I have dreams about, you know, uh, how, what I'm gonna do when I get out of here and things, you know. Uh, I definitely want to work, you know, because I'm married now and stuff, and I got five for the family. I dream about uh, one day getting off probation and moving from the city, you know. Uh, can't stand it any longer. I've never been off probation since I've been on, about six or seven years now, and uh, I'm in jail about every four months for something crazy, you know. You try to get sex out your mind completely because it, it won't do nothing but make your time harder. There's a lot of dudes that come up here that are here so long, they go up there to 6 South and get to playing around with the homosexuals up on 6 South. That, that, that sex is on their mind so much, but as far as I'm concerned, while I'm here, sex is completely out of my mind. They got, a, they got a, everything all confused, I mean, you know. You get your mail at the wrong time. They don't give you your envelopes to your mail. They, they're on a fucked up place, hey, man. <laughs> what? Hey, my people. It's a fucked up place. Uh, I like my house, you know? You see, as you can see my room, windows cracked, be freezing at night. 
roaches all in my wallet at night. take a little bit out to them. You know, I do this usually. You know, a lot of people down in the kitchen do things like this, you know, because they don't get very much to eat. And since we have a position like we do, we figure, you know, whenever they ask for something, we usually give it to them. Okay. Even though I will get busted if I get caught giving this to them, you know? Now, if the cook see me, I'm busted. What y'all doing, you go, man? Brother? We know how it is up there, you know? Right on. Right on. Right it's good that we have comrades down the kitchen down there, you know, to further the cause of the people. Right on. Right on, brother. Right on. Right on. Right on. Right on. Hey, man, come right back, man. Go ahead. Come back. 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 Come You know, uh, can't be for real. It's against the law, you know. You got to be a square, you dig, and have a job like you and everything else. You know? And you get along, you know. But if you be for real, you dig, you wind up in here like me. So it's best to be a plastic, uh, cute type people. Uh, that's all I got. Wish you could have another phone. Hey man, get away. Say you don't like it, Jeff Samuel. I'm coming out, motherfucker. Fuck you in your head. Fuck you too,
Give it to them. 